Hi guys, it is another hot, sticky, gloomy day here in the end times in Babylon of South Austin, Texas. We have stumbled into Saturday morning, May 9th, 2015, I believe it is. So for the few people on this planet who are interested in this subject, this is just, this is not a rant. This is a whine. This is a whine. And it is my annual plans, my plans for the summer whine about uh, your old eco-catastrophist, depressed collapsitarian looks ahead towards summer. And I, I do this every year because I, I record this about this time and then I like to play it back at, at the end of the summer for a sick, twisted laugh to, uh, th th this is just testing my, uh, my doomsday prophecy skills, trying, trying to see how well I can call my own teeny weeny little life for the next six months. Uh, and, and it usually, uh, six months from, from now, when I play this back, I will find that uh, what I'm saying here had absolutely zero to do with the way my life turned out. So if you've heard this rant before, you probably don't need to listen to it again, but if, but if you, like me, consider yourself a depressed collapsitarian eco-catastrophist just trying to figure out you know, just, just just how to get through the summer. Uh, this is just just my views on it. For what they're worth, I, they're no more valid and no more invalid than your than your views. I'm just throwing it out there. Uh, There's a snippet of life in the end times. So as I say, nothing, probably nothing original in in there. I do want to talk about this term, depressed collapsitarian. I, I am amazed. To say, guys, uh, and I'm very and I'm very glad to report that I am not uh, depressed. Uh, I have not been depressed in the year 2015. I, I have no clue why I'm not a lot more depressed than I am. I I am completely hopeless. Completely hopeless uh, about every facet of the future of this planet, from uh, this country, to this civilization, to humanity, to every species we share the planet with, to the planet it, itself. I, I am beyond ever regaining hope. Uh, but somehow, I, I, and, and, I, and don't ask me how, uh, I am not depressed yet anyway, although I can always feel uh, this storm brewing, these storm clouds of depression just hanging. Uh, at least the sword of Damocles is, is about this far away, and, and I want to keep the sword of Damocles that far away. So once again, I am heading out into, into what? Uh, as I learn to walk between two worlds, and I was thinking about uh, when I was thinking about this rant uh, and just thinking about my life in general. Uh, I was thinking about actually a neighbor of mine who doesn't know I exist. He lives about three or four blocks from here, right up the creek. Fellow, a, a journalism professor right here at the University of Texas in Austin, Robert Jensen, one of my Humpty Dumpty tribe heroes. I had a rant on this one time. I was reading an essay of his. I believe that was printed in collapseofindustrialcivilization.com. If you're not familiar with collapseofindustrialcivilization.com, you need to uh, read it. And what he was talking about in, in uh, his essay in case you missed it, and you can probably go look up Robert Jensen, that's J-E-N-S-E-N, -E -N, and you'll find this excellent essay. It's just about how 
he lives in, in, in two completely different worlds that he fully understands what is going on on this planet that we are this far from this entire house of cards coming down it could happen any day every day that I wake up I am amazed to see that it has it and, and he's just saying how you you know how he understands this intellectually emotionally probably on a cellular level as I say yet somehow he continues to get up every day about four blocks from here you know make his morning coffee go to his job down at the university teaching these young energetic journalism students how to get out there and save the world when he knows the world is beyond saving uh, and, and, and once you've reached this point you know it, it, it's what do you do with this information this this is why 99.9 percent .9 of this planet is in denial of this information about what I call the deep end of the doomsday prophecy pool the impending and unfolding and ramping up ecological collapse of a planet going on right in front of our eyes now there are a few people out there who are waking up uh, to the shallow end of the uh, of the doomsday prophecy pool but uh, that might be one percent of the people on the planet who understand who are even awake to that end of it but, but, but even those folks are completely clueless it is when you understand both the shallow and the deep end uh, of the doomsday prophecy pool and, and just have to go about your life you know where I'm staying now uh, I'm, I'm just sleeping on the floor of this place and there's a there's a ceiling fan right above me so the first thing I see every single morning when I wake up and I open my eyes I see this ceiling fan uh, going about and it makes me think of the opening scene of Apocalypse Now it, it, you know when, <laughs> when Martin Sheen he's, he's laying there in Saigon a uh, hot sweaty mattress looking up at the ceiling fan uh, and what, what are the opening two words of that uh, of that movie Apocalypse Now Saigon shit and, and it's me like planet Earth shit uh, but somehow uh, he gets out of bed with full knowledge of apocalypse now about the shit storm blowing through the fan blades uh, but somehow uh, he, he gets out of bed somehow I, I get out of bed to make it through one more day with the full understanding that uh, that a that, that that there's no saving this planet, and as part of that understanding, is when you realize, as I've said how many times on this uh, on uh, on Humpty Dumpty tribe, when it occurs to you, when it dawns on you, that there is nothing that you personally can do to turn this freight train around there is absolutely nothing that you as an individual can do to change one goddamn thing uh, uh, about the uh, this runaway train as as Robert Jensen's wife uh, Eliza Gilkison sings about in her song 
the runaway train. Well, here comes the thunder. So if, if this if this rant gets rained out, I'm not going to start it over. So, y y you know, I there's not a goddamn thing I can do. Let me tell you how much the universe gives a shit uh, about Humpty Dumpty tribe. Uh, you know, I was reading uh, this essay by by Edward O. Wilson yesterday, who who has done as much as anybody on this planet to warn humanity about what is coming down the pike. But it, it, the the man, I think he's like 92 years old, and he understands he's devoted his entire life. And it's not just him, it's James Lovelock, it's David Attenborough, it, you, you know, who did we lose last year, Al Bartlett. These men have devoted their entire lives to getting the word out. Uh, and, it, and it's done nothing to change the course. Uh, and so when you understand there's not a goddamn thing you can do about it. Uh, you know, you can get rid of your gas-sucking car. You can uh, get palm oil out of your diet. You can become a vegan. And it doesn't make a goddamn difference. And uh, so here I sit. And so here I sit. Uh, looking at my summer, uh, and, and I'm going to hold the bombshell a little bit later, although I probably gave it away. I'm going to give it away in the title. So here are my plans for the summer. Here, here's my year so far. Uh, I have made, I, I, just for people don't realize this, I am a 55-year-old educated white man with five years of college, uh, a a former both journalist and real estate agent and investor who walked away from my $100,000 a year real estate agent and investment job I had in 2008 had nothing to do with the economic crash. It had everything to do with me pulling my head out of my ass. So in 2008, I walked away from all of this shit and I have been spending the past seven years educating myself on what is unfolding on this planet and what we can do about it, more importantly, what we cannot do about it to reach this point. <clears throat> okay, so I made $113,000 in 2008 so far this year, in 2015. Uh, I have made, <clears throat> well, there's two ways to say this. I'm mean, like, the, the, the money that I have made for services rendered, I have made $450 in the year 2015. $415. And I do not know, I have no clue where my next penny is coming from. No clue where my next penny is coming from. Now I do I do have some real estate income. This is what I survive off of is $800 a year real estate income. Uh, $800 a month from a rental that I have. But uh, with this roof job from hell and the taxes, I have not made one penny. I think maybe right around now I will enter the black for the first time in my life, speaking of entering the black. Uh, so anywho's, uh, I have made $450 this year. It's a damn good thing I have 2,000 ounces of silver buried in the ground. I'm getting ready to go dig up some more uh, any day now. So here are my plans for the summer, guys. Uh, I have some vague plan to head to Colorado. Uh, three weeks from now, I am supposed to be volunteering at a folk festival in Pagosa Springs, Colorado. And the week after that, I'm supposed to be volunteering at a folk festival in Palisades, 
Colorado. At this moment, I have no clue how I am getting to Colorado. Uh, I have a little bit of a clue where I'm going to live when I do get to Colorado, assuming this $200 trailer in Paonia, Colorado uh, is still available. I will be moving back in to my little $200 a month doomsday trailer in Paonia, Colorado. Assuming it's still available at all. I don't know. I don't know. I'm supposed to be living there in about two weeks. I have no idea how I'm going to get there. Uh, I have no clue what I'm going to do in Colorado all summer. I have some little dim, vague hope that maybe I'll be trimming uh, weed next fall and then come back to Austin, Texas to sell Christmas trees in Austin, Texas for the Optimist Club to make enough money to head back down to St. Croix to spend the winter. So that is my summer and it's getting ready to rain. Maybe this is the universe not wanting me to admit this, guys, but I, I had a lot more to say about this rant. But that's really, that's, that's, that is my plans for the summer. You just heard my entire date book. Uh, but one plan I do have as the storm rolls in your old eco-catastrophist Hambone Little Tail will be buying a gas-sucking infernal combustion truck in the next two or three weeks. I'm going to go down, dig up uh, one or two hundred ounces of silver, sell my silver, because your old eco-catastrophist has to go buy himself a truck because there is no way to do what I need to do in Colorado without it. But let me read my horoscope for the week as the rain begins. My Virgo horoscope, Wish Me Luck, by Rob Bresney. Am I reading the astrological omens correctly? I hope so. From what I can tell, you have been flying under the radar and over the rainbow. You have been exploiting the loopholes in the big bad system and enjoying some rather daring experiments with liberation. At this point in your adventure, you may be worried that your lucky streak cannot continue much longer. I am here to tell you that it can, it will, it must. I predict that your detail-loving intelligence will paradoxically guide you to expand your possibilities even further. Thank you, Rob Bresney. I used to work with Rob years ago. But anyway, guys, I had more to say, but I understand I'm talking to myself. So this is your old doomsday prophet, hopefully not depressed, collapsitarian, eco-catastrophist, heading in to the latest thunderstorm rolling into his life figuring out how I am going to get to Doomsday Trailer in Paonia, Colorado so I can be at a folk festival in 18 days from now to party while the planet burns with my brand new group of lovable, clueless friends because I'm pretty much done with the group here in Austin, Texas, and they are pretty much done with me. 
So I think I got one more picking party tonight. One more picking party next Saturday night. I have to bake a wedding cake is my plans for next week and figure out how I am getting my ass to Colorado back to Doomsday Trailer to see what possibilities will be unfolding in my life this summer. Uh, and I hope that this one is wide open enough that six months from now, when I get back to Austin, Texas to sell Christmas trees to clueless morons for the Optimist Club, I will look back at this rant and say, well, Hambone, you did just what you claimed you were going to do. And other than that, the universe will fill in my blanks for this wine. Bye, guys.